right, folks. So I thought I'd give you a different view. It's gonna be a hot day today. It's 25 and it's supposed to go to about 30. And uh, we're supposed to have a humidex of about 40. So that's about as hot as it gets here. Um, and uh, in the winter, we have the cold in the January, February, it like goes to about minus 20 or well, below minus 20 and uh, quite regularly. So basically January, February out for astrophotography. But now everything is beautiful and it's good. And this is gonna be my last episode on focus and collimation probably because problem solved. So I'm gonna show you how that went. So one thing I wanted to show you was the screws that I changed out to collimate my scope. These are the ones that came with the scope, Explore Scientific, um, ED-102 carbon fiber, and a uh, very nice scope, works great. But honestly, those screws are not very good and I don't know why they go cheap on them. So, um, and they even encourage you to uh, do your own collimation because uh, um, it's tough to ship equipment and not have it go out of collimation. So that's not a very good screw. So I got these ones, nice machine head screws, uh, ordered them from who knows where, China, <coughs> China obviously, and it took about a month to get them. And I replaced those in my uh, scope and uh, they work great and they, they're solid. And uh, the, the ones, these ones here didn't actually fit the Allen key very well. So, you know, they weren't, I don't know, I don't know what the size was, but it didn't seem to fit any Allen key, whether I had a British or metric. So uh, these ones here were great metric. Uh, these are, uh... so that was one thing. Uh, that was one thing I had to do was uh, change out those screws after I had decided what I needed to do. And um, that helped. This is uh, my CCD inspector and uh, it shows uh, uh, a little bit about aspect ratio here. It says a number below 20 to 30 percent represents a pretty round star. A number of zero represents perfectly round star. So uh, this is uh, their metric and uh, after I did my collimation I, I, I took exposures of an open cluster and uh, did about 10, 10 of them so that it can, it can average and I got this. So don't look at these first three because I, uh, uh, these first two, because I was just trying to um, set my exposures and stuff. But you can see the aspect ratio is below 20% uh, in most of them. So that's a good round star. This one's 25, but not sure what happened there. But uh, so you take a dozen or so pictures and it averages them up. And so the aspect ratio is showing I got nice round stars. And um, then you can do the curvature and uh, see how that looks. So uh, let's get the curvature out there. So here's the curvature. And if you remember, I was saying that the black is represented uh, as uh, black represents the focus and it's, it goes to lighter blue, you get into your defocused area. So this is uh, exactly what you would expect. Uh, um, you're going to get a, a slight defocusing at the sides and uh, it's and it's very even um, so uh, this is a collimation uh, good collimation and uh, round stars good focus um, that's uh, good shape and uh, it's good collimation so that's it I finally got this thing sorted out it took a lot of uh, attempts um, what I had to do, which was uh, I, I, I explained before, was uh, using a star test, and um, and so I tried that in the field, and uh, actually it still was very difficult to like a visual star test was very difficult to judge. So I went with the um, star test where I defocused the star a little bit, and I took pictures. And then I did an alignment, I did an adjustment, then I took a picture, and then I did an alignment. And uh, that was a lot easier to discern the sort of uh, collimation of the scope. And uh, that left me with, what do you see here? Nice round stars and uh, 
here uh, with good aspect ratio and good focusing. So the other thing about this is the, you know, I was having trouble with the batten off mask and uh, this uh, has now seemed to clear up the, the per performance of the batten off mask. It, um, my last session I had it focused at the beginning of the night and it went the whole night without, without budging or going out of focus and uh, it was very good. So um, that looks better now about with uh, batten off masks, but I did get myself a, a black mask. I'm not sure that the the, the uh, clear one uh, clear one's probably fine. It's easier uh, you get uh, brighter diffraction, uh, but you don't really need that. Uh, you, you, it's easy to see with a camera. Okay, so let's look at the results. So this is uh, Needle Galaxy, and uh, I have uh, fairly good resolution here. Like my scope is only a four-inch scope, so so it, it can only do so much. Um, but uh, I got a fairly good uh, resolved uh, image here. You can even see other galaxies, um, and the stars are round, and uh, they're pretty much round to the very edges, which is so that my flattening. Um, field flattener and the the uh, back focus the measurement uh, back to the camera is looks all good so that's the results of that one and then I just went out the other day and uh, did this one that's pretty starry uh, this is crescent nebula and uh, again good focus on the stars good round stars all the way to the edges and uh, Crescent Nebula is a is a, I've I've zoomed in a little bit here, so it's not as uh, you can see it's not the sharpest thing, but that's because it basically it's a small nebula, and uh, I'm zooming in, um, and my scope is only a, it's only a four inch scope, so its resolution is about one and a half um, seconds of arc. But uh, one of the good news things about this is when I was guiding that. Um, and I'll I'll do a I'll do another video on guiding, but I was guiding to half a second of arc, and uh, and it was holding like that basically the whole night, even in the wind. It was actually a kind of a windy night, 17 kilometer per hour uh, winds, and uh, it guided with this kind of accuracy, uh, and that's using the new uh, multi-star guiding, and uh, I'll I'll do a video on that. So these are my results, and finally my focus collimation I'm happy with. I don't think I'll be readdressing that until maybe next year when I, I'll, I'll see if I need to do an adjustment. Nice thing about refractor is you really don't need to adjust it, and unless something got something got unless a screw got loose. So uh, that's that's it for that. Hope you hope you like the video.